Hello, and welcome to Tandy Therapy Box Podcast. I am Lauren Tandy, your host and clinician coach. I am an SLP, speech language pathologist, and multi therapy private practice owner who promotes and practices hybrid services. I love helping other therapists thrive in areas of early intervention, caregiver coaching, feeding and swallowing or dysphagia practices, telepractice, and hybrid interventions. This podcast is meant for therapists who want to maximize their time and income without spinning their wheels. I invite you to join me on this journey and get involved in our online community for support and development of your individual skills. Hi guys, and welcome to the Tandy Therapy Box podcast. Today is going to be shorter than usual. Why, you might wonder? Well, it's spring break. And true to my form, I didn't look far enough ahead on the calendar and got surprised with an extra couple days off for my kiddos. So we are working from home and playing from home. It actually worked out pretty well because a couple of my kiddos are sick right now. So they would have had to stay home anyway. This is why I love hybrid services and how I've been able to set up my practice uh, before COVID and to now. I tailor my work and my business around my family needs, and that actually allows me to work more. I wouldn't have to take these days off and stay home with my kiddos. I can still work from home. So that being said, it is going to be a little bit shorter today, um, but I have some really fun ideas for you in the realm of speech language, parenting, Walt Disney World, traveling, vacations, and taking those opportunities for natural learning environments, um, as well as the difficulties that I face traveling with a kiddo with dysphagia and an extremely picky eater due to that and some other things. So let's get started here. Um, by the time that you hear this, I will likely either be in Florida or you're listening to this later and we've already returned. Maybe you listen to this a lot later um, as a, an old recording, but the stuff that I'm going to share with you today is pertinent to my experience as an early intervention speech language pathologist, an early inter intervention clinician, um, as well as just a mom, um, because that's where I get most of my inspiration and knowledge from. So as you might know already, I have three children and I have had things come up that lend themselves well to me as a speech language pathologist to deal with. However, I know there's lots of moms out there that maybe don't have this foundation and are struggling in this area um, and many areas. So uh, early intervention, speech development, language, dysphagia, difficulty traveling due to picky eating. Um, that's a huge one for our family and people don't realize, but it affects not only just our immediate family, but everyone around us. Um, we have been lucky that I have taken additional steps to learn more about what I can do for my kiddo that has dysphagia and difficulty with eating and difficulty being around certain foods, um, as well as anaphylaxis and allergies. Uh, so we have a mixture of things that we deal with that makes it difficult to travel. And it so happens that next week we are heading to Walt Disney World, uh, Orlando, Florida, and Universal Studios. Um, my oldest son loves Harry Potter. And he's read all of the books, as have I, a couple times. Um, he's watched all of the movies with me. My middle son is just getting into independent reading for fun. Um, he went ahead and watched the movies, and he's watched almost all of the movies, not the last movies. Um, but he's getting excited for Harry Potter, too, which makes me happy because I'm a Harry Potter fan. Uh, so we get to go to Universal Studios in Orlando and go on the Hogwarts train. I got the 
the, what is it, Park Hopper Pass in order to be able to do that. We're so excited. Um, we are going to get some sun. I looked at the weather and it's going to be in the high 70s as a low high, um, mostly in the 80s and even up to 90 degrees. Oh my gosh, as a girl from North Idaho who's been living with sub-zero temperatures this winter, uh, we couldn't even go skiing over Christmas break because the temperatures got so low. And I had planned for our week off to be on the ski hill. So I am so ready for a day by the pool, maybe the beach, and just some warm weather in general. I think my kids are as well. So here we go to Orlando next week. And for a family who has a kiddo with special needs in general. Um, it's a lot of planning, as I'm sure a lot of you clinicians and parents out there know. Um, if you have any special needs in the family, it can be difficult to know what to do, especially if you don't travel often with your family, um, which we are starting to travel more with our family as our kids are getting older, instead of just taking a trip john and myself um but we are starting to include our kids in more family vacations and looking and seeking that out why you might ask um i do love my time alone with my husband we still seek opportunities for that out as well however i have learned um actually from some of my sister's european husband's friends and their families from Denmark and just how um, Europeans think about things in general. And that's a big generalization. I would say more specifically the conversations that I've had with um, my sister and her husband and their friends. They value education through travel. Uh, so they try to include their children in all travel that they do as much as possible and they prioritize travel because it's a part of development and learning and having a whole world view and a whole world education. It's a way to broaden our horizons and learn about the world, right? Well, while I was researching trips to Walt Disney World, um, I also found that it's also a local you know, if you are a local family, even just heading to Walt Disney World for fun with your kids for the day, if you're taking spring break and going there, or if you're having them uh, skip school and go to Walt Disney World or somewhere like that for a trip. You guys are getting to see my daughter here on the video popping her head in. Um, but it's a learning opportunity, right? So it is part of our natural learning opportunities as we teach in family and caregiver coaching. It's a great opportunity to teach about language, educate about things that they wouldn't typically see like an airport, airplanes, pilots, uh, different kinds of people, getting out and seeing diversity, hearing different languages. And going to Walt Disney World, they get to see a rich history of American culture and development. When we went to Disneyland a few years ago, I loved that my kids who are um, into art got to be involved in a drawing class by Walt Disney creators. So that was really cool to me um, and something that we still have their drawings and their creations from that trip in our Disneyland book, um, but that was an awesome opportunity for them. So this time I am looking forward to learning opportunities for my kids, as well as feeding and swallowing opportunities for my son with dysphagia. And that might sound funny to you guys. Um, I am excited that now at this point we've grown out of enough allergies and um, aversiveness that I can travel without having to pack food. Um, and I'll share my full story with you another time, but it used to be from uh, right before my son turned two until 
maybe a couple of years ago that I had to pack food everywhere we went. And it wasn't just packing any food. It was very specific to his diet, specific to his allergies. And on top of that, specific to his aversiveness. So what he would accept. And on top of that, that always changed. So it wasn't always the same foods that he would accept. He would get into food jags, accept a food for a long period of time. It was on our safe list. It was on our like list. And then all of a sudden I'd have it packed for a trip and we'd be, you know, somewhere where I didn't have easy access to another food like camping or grandma's house. And he would all, all of a sudden say, nope, <laughs> no, thank you. That's not a food I want anymore. So as you can imagine, it creates a lot of family stress, a lot of time dedicated to planning, researching, um, so I'm very thankful that for this trip, he's grown out of enough allergies that I do not have to pack food. However, I do have to research. And what I have found is that um, at Disney World, they are very allergy friendly and sensitivity friendly. So if you go on, and what I also learned is that you need to plan ahead in order to make reservations at restaurants and then if your child has two or three or more allergies, they give you an email or phone number to call or communicate through to set up custom menus or find out what's available based on your child's allergies. So in this world of allergies, sensory sensitivities, uh, food sensitivities and aversiveness, I have really gotten to learn what restaurants locally and when I travel cater to allergies um, and food needs. However, when you're going on a trip, it's like a whole new learning opportunity. And I say learning opportunity in a very generous way. Um, it takes a lot of time. And so I've had to do a little bit of research, not as much as I would have had to have done if, um, it were two years ago or four years ago when I packed everything. Um, however, through this course of learning and knowing what stores have what, what restaurants have what, um, I was able to see that there's a Costco and a Walmart nearby. And I, I know pretty much everything at those stores that he can have. So in a previous year, I would have hit up one of those stores, stocked up on what, on what we need, and then um, stay in a place with a kitchen so that I could prepare and pack every morning. Now think about what that does when you are trying to be at, at the park for early access and trying to get on the rides. So you have to be there at what, between seven and 7.30 to get in line, to get a good spot in line if you wanna get a good spot in line inside the park for one of the rides. And then you factor in, you know, getting up early to prepare your meal or preparing your meal the night before, having things to pack it in, um, mapping out where you can go in the park in order to get food that your child can have. Um, it takes a lot of work. So here we are today. I was able to make reservations about a month and a half ago. You can get on and make reservations at restaurants, I think 60 to 90 days before your scheduled trip day. Um, and then that's when they give you the information to contact the allergy specialists with the resorts. So I was able to get on and look at the menu and see what's available. Um, I do plan on hitting up one of the safe stores that I know what they have and stocking up on some items and snacks just in case, because often is the case, even if we think it is a safe food, um, it might cause throat itching, it might cause um, itchiness, it might cause an upset stomach, uh, just generally not feeling well. So I know um, that I have backups if that happens for him. So that's a little bit about what it's like to travel with a kiddo with special food needs. Um, my son 
also has some other health needs that we are being, you know, traveling, needing to travel with medicines, planning that out, writing directions, having all the prescriptions ready, asking for a medical letter from his doctor. It takes a lot of preparation. Um, so as you can probably imagine, sometimes it's easier to either drive somewhere or just um, don't go, stay home, do something around the house because it is a lot of work. But we're getting to the point now where we've been doing it. We know a lot more than we did when things first happened and we first found out about the autoimmune disorder and things that we would need to do and things developed over time. So I do feel like I can make these educated decisions on our trip. However, once we get to Walt Disney Resort, um, there will be things that we have to be careful of also that are also for another day that we'll get into. That's just a glimpse of what someone, a parent, deals with for their child with food aversiveness, food sensitivities, anaphylaxis, allergies, and for my son, EOE, eosinophilic esophagitis, uh, which is an autoimmune disorder affecting his esophagus and stomach with an overgrowth of white blood cells. It is a lot. However, in order to provide these experiences that I value for my kids and take them places where they have learning opportunities, it's worth it to me as a parent to learn how to do that safely and um, in a fun way, efficiently. As a parent and as a speech language pathologist, I have that personal experience to share with other families on how to do it, what, what the difficulties are, what the challenges are, what the rewards are. And I think that's developed in me more as a mom who has experience with dysphagia in her son and an autoimmune disorder affecting the esophage esophageal tract and the stomach. Um, but that's part of something that we use in our in our family coaching and our caregiver coaching, we use our own experiences, our own knowledge, um, and that is part of my knowledge. Another area that I'm looking forward to when we go on our trip is that my other two kiddos, along with my middle son, will have opportunities for learning. Um, I plan on taking full advantage of those opportunities. Right now, my daughter is taking voice lessons, we're going to go to, and she's actually, her song that she's practicing for her recital is um, Into the Unknown by Frozen and, or uh, Mandel. And it is one of the songs that Elsa is going to sing for one of her mini concerts that we can get into while we're there. So I'm excited for her for that as well as my son is very artistic and into drawing and designing. Um, and I plan to do another Walt Disney creator sketch um, tutorial. And so these are the things that I've been able to look ahead and find and sign up for. Um, my husband is taking the boys on a trip to go see the crocodiles one of the days. Uh, one of my planned pool days. So that's another learning opportunity. And my daughter is going to see so much that she's never seen before, including the um, around the world ride where she learns about different countries and different cultures. Um, I'm just so excited for the learning and the sun, obviously, but also even trying new foods. Um, we have reservations at restaurants that are well known in that area and they have um, cultural foods. So I'm very excited about that. All right. So 
This is the episode that I wanted to talk about our spring break plans because we're in spring break time for everyone and all the clinicians going off on their trips, taking breaks from schools. And I feel very lucky this year that we're able to go somewhere and take our son, even though it does take some planning. Um, and I'm looking very much forward to the learning that we are going to do. So I will circle back around later and let you know how that turned out, what we got to learn about, what things that I didn't anticipate that we got to do, and share that the next time. We'll see you then. For more clinician coaching and resources from Lauren Tandy and Tandy Therapy Box, hop on Facebook and join her clinician community, Tandy Therapy Box and Early Intervention Telepractice. Tandy Therapy Box is a place to be for clinician coaching direct contact with Lauren Tandy. Early Intervention Telepractice is the place to be for clinicians needing general resources for birth to three and beyond. We look forward to seeing you there.